Johnson from Hello Well and uh, wanted to switch things up a little bit this week just sit down and chat with you guys one-on-one -on -one and share my personal story with you guys I've had some requests for this video so uh, here we go I'm going to be sharing my weight loss journey with you guys today very excited uh, but before I get into that I really wanted to share with you guys some news I am about to embark on a new path a new venture in life um, by the time I post this video, it will have already happened, um, but I have decided to go back to school to become a holistic nutritionist, ah! which I'm really, really excited about um, my entire life, especially being an unhealthy, overweight kid growing up. It has literally been my lifelong obsession to learn about everything health and weight loss and so I'm really, really excited to now be taking this next next step in that process and actually going to school and uh, becoming a certified holistic nutritionist. So yeah, that's pretty awesome. I'm really excited to share the information with you guys. Like that's a huge part of, of why I wanna do it as well. I feel very, very passionately this year about spreading the message of health um, and so I think this is going to be a great way to do that. So as I go through the curriculum, I'm really excited to share it with you guys. So that's what's going on for me. Back to my story. I'm also just having my breakfast smoothie right now. So don't mind me as I chug this as I chat. Whew. All right. Where do I start? Man, oh man. So growing up, I loved food. So I remember in our old house growing up, we had a pantry downstairs, like a massive walk-in pantry. And when I was younger, I totally remember going in there hiding, like I wasn't allowed to be doing this, but I was doing it. And just going to town on like wagon wheels, gushers, fruit roll-ups, cheesies, like all this delicious, but not so healthy food. So I was just like always shoveling that into my face. And then we would have downstairs also our fridge was stocked full of pop. And like this stuff was supposed to be like kept for treat weekends, but I was, I was eating it all the time. So I remember going to school and going into that fridge and like grabbing like two Dr. Peppers and just putting them in my backpack and drinking like two pops a day. So needless to say, you can imagine by the time I was in grade... I think grade five, almost grade six, I was almost 200 pounds. I remember the first time that I knew that I had a weight problem was when I was in grade three. And I remember I was sitting in class at my desk and there were a group of boys, like three boys in front of me. And I remember them turning around and pointing at my legs and laughing which was like so devastating. So that was the first time I knew like, oh, I guess like I'm the fat kid. So that happened. And then I remember shortly after that being at a, a school dance or it was like a school Halloween party. And I remember like all the thin, pretty girls had boys asking them to dance. And I remember just standing in the corner of the room all by myself, no one asking me to dance. And I think like at our core level, we all just really want to love and be loved. And unfortunately, I felt at that point in my life that the way I looked and being overweight like that, the way I was receiving what the world was telling me was that I wasn't lovable. I wasn't acceptable looking like that. Whew. We didn't have Kleenex, so I'm using toilet paper. I've done so much emotional work on this, you guys. And I swear, isn't it crazy how our childhood bullies or hurts, like they stick, they really do, they stick with us our whole lives. All right, I think I'm good. <laughs> 
So that was enough motivation for me. At that point in my life, I decided I do not want this to be my life. I do not want this to be my reality anymore. Shortly after that, I went to my mom and I said, mom, I wanna go to a nutritionist, which is so cool that it was a nutritionist that helped me when I was a kid and now that's what I'm gonna be going to school for to help other people with, I love that. So I told my mom that I wanted to go to a nutritionist and I started working out every day after school, grade six, I would come home and I would turn on that Thai bow. For anybody who doesn't know Thai bow and Billy Blanks, do yourself a favor, look it up. It is a fantastic kickboxing workout. Double time. Ready, double time, go. And then like I said, I told my mom I wanted to go to a nutritionist. So I remember going to a nutritionist and my first session with her, she said, I think we should send you to an eating disorders counselor. And I was only in grade six and I was like, okay. Wasn't that surprising to me. Um, I think my relationship with food was always disordered. It wasn't a healthy relationship with food. And my mom had always had uh, issues with eating as well. I think in today's day and age where we're constantly thrown images of women in TV, movies, and magazines that look thin and perfect, it's no wonder that a lot of us do have some sort of issue with food. So I started going to this eating disorders counselor and she really, really changed my life. She really was amazing. She taught me how to eat properly. I remember going to her and she helped me set up a meal plan. So realizing that like every time I ate, I needed to eat protein, healthy fat and carbohydrate to make sure that I was gonna be full long enough um, to make sure that I was eating like every three to four hours because before what I was doing was I was intentionally trying not to eat and then I would binge. So that is one of the biggest things. I feel like so many women, so many of us have done that or do do that where we try not to eat because we feel like less calories is gonna make us lose weight. But if one thing I can just really communicate through my personal experience is to listen to your body and eat when you're hungry. So that was really big. That was huge for me. That really helped me to stop binging. And then last but not least, and probably most important, was doing the emotional work. Her and I did a lot of digging, um, trying to heal some past hurts. And I cannot stress enough like, this is like, in the words of DJ Khaled, this would be a major key alert. So let me give you a major key. Doing the emotional work is so, so key. Oprah has said it, if you've read the book, Women, Food, and God, she says it in that book, and I'm gonna say it now. Your relationship with food, in my experience, is directly correlated and mirrored to your relationship with yourself, your relationship, and your belief in love and anger and spirituality. In my experience, the more that I have dealt with and healed those past hurts, the more that I've gone deeper into my own self love, deeper into figuring out who I really am, what brings me to life, what makes me happy, the less I feel inclined to eat. Because I was eating to make myself feel better and to make myself feel happy. And I really, really believe for most people who are overeaters, we overeat to make ourselves feel better, to make ourselves feel happy or comfortable or loved, whatever it may be for you. So do whatever you gotta do to do the emotional stuff, you guys. Um, you know, counseling, self-help books, self-development workshops, get yourself like a meditation or some sort of spiritual practice, whatever works for you. But I can't stress that enough, like dealing with your emotional well-being is really, really key if you wanna lose weight or wanna just have a better relationship with yourself and your body. I cannot tell you guys for how long It makes me emotional thinking back to it because it was really painful for, uh, gotta get the freaking toilet paper again. <laughs> oh, I remember a large, large portion of my life beating myself up every single day 
every single time that I ate, it was always a constant self judgment. Am I eating the right thing? Am I eating the wrong thing? Am I eating too much? Like every single day, self punishment, self, just, I was beating myself up every day. And I remember one time in particular, just, I was taking a bath. I was laying in the bath and I was just crying so hard because I was just so sick and tired. I was just so sick and tired of being so cruel to myself. I really didn't want to live that way. And so I started putting in the work to heal myself. And in my experience, the healing doesn't happen overnight. The weight loss doesn't happen overnight. It takes time for your belief systems about yourself and your body, your relationship with yourself, like all this stuff, it takes time, but focusing on healing, creating positive affirmations, and trying to develop that better relationship with yourself, it can happen, you guys. It really, really can happen. The same thing with weight loss. Like I did not lose that 40 pounds overnight. It took me a good chunk of time to lose that weight. And over the years, my weight has fluctuated a lot depending on where I am in my life, emotionally, what's going on in life. Don't be so hard on yourself. It will come in time. If you continue to make it a priority to want to heal, to want to get better, if your intention is to want to lose weight or just have a better relationship with your body, no matter how you look, that can be a reality. So that was it, you guys. I just started working out five days a week. I started putting healthy, real food into my body. I wasn't eating packaged, processed foods. A lot of these like low fat foods that are in our grocery stores end up having so many chemicals in them that actually increase our appetites and totally just mess with us. So in my experience, making real homemade food out of real ingredients is super important and having patience, knowing it's going to take time. I certainly was not perfect. I'm still not perfect when it comes to the way I eat. I think life is meant to be enjoyed and part of that is enjoying food and not punishing yourself when you have good food. So it's a balance. I think the key is creating a long-term lifestyle that is going to work for you. Which leads me to my next point, another DJ Khaled major key alert. So let me give you a major key. Is both your diet and your exercise routine have to be something that you are going to enjoy or at least that you're not going to hate. So if you don't like going to the gym, start with going for a walk every day. For me, I love to dance. So I go to dance classes. I think a lot of the times we put pressure on ourselves to like do these intense workouts, go to spin classes or boot camps, but I think if you just move your body, it, make that your intention to just move your body every day. That's better than nothing. And over time, your body will strengthen, your endurance will increase, and you might feel inclined to push your workouts a little bit harder. But it's gotta be something right now that if you go and do it, <laughs> the next day you're not gonna be like, oh my God, that was so horrible, I'm never doing that again. Because how many of us have done that where we go to a spin class or a boot camp class and it's so hard that you're like, oh my gosh, I never want to go and do that again. I don't blame you. That was hell. I wouldn't want to do that either. So do something that you're going to enjoy. Same thing with your diet. If you're like, I hate salads. Well, start with just like having a smoothie a day instead of focusing on being like, I can't eat this and I can't eat that and I can't eat that. Instead of focusing on what you're depriving yourself of, focus on how you want to feel and focus on putting healthier, more vibrant foods into your diet. So just focus on like having a green smoothie every day or a green juice, just incorporate more plants into your diet. And over time, same thing, your body will change, your taste buds, I promise you, they do change over time. So don't feel like it needs to be a black and white situation where overnight you need to be a fitness enthusiast who only eats salads and drink smoothies. Start with going for walks. Have a green smoothie or a green juice every day. Over time, your body will get stronger 
your taste buds will change. I also really wanted to make a point of saying that a large part of my motivation to lose weight as I shared in the beginning was the fact that like I wanted to be loved. I wanted to be accepted by others. And it's kind of funny because after I lost the weight, I remember in high school getting my first real boyfriend and I vividly remember constantly saying to him, I feel like you don't love me. Do you love me? He was very good to me. He was a great boyfriend and he definitely loved me. It was me who could not feel it because I didn't love myself yet. So I'm telling you guys, if you think that losing weight is going to help you feel loved and get that love in your life, if you don't feel it for yourself, even when you do get it from other people, it doesn't mean anything. So get that self-love in your life. <laughs> I really hope you guys liked this video. I honestly, ugh, I felt super nervous sharing this. I can definitely do more videos on this topic if you guys like. Like I feel like this was part one of my weight loss and health journey. This was what happened just when I was a kid, but much, I mean, it's been like two decades since then. So a lot has happened over the years to get to who I am and where I am today. So if you guys would like to see more videos on more of this stuff, more of this journey, um, comment below, let me know. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. And uh, yeah, hit the subscribe button also down below. I do new videos every single week. So if you guys would like to be notified when those videos come out, hit the subscribe button. Thanks so much for watching you guys. It means a lot and uh, have a great week. We'll see you next week.